Hey everybody, Mr. Love here. Um, today we're going to look at, or right now we're going to look at a, uh, a problem that deals with a projectile that is fired at an angle. And so these all sort of look the same, and you see the trajectory that sort of looks like that. Um, and uh, we always start off with some initial velocity, and this initial velocity we're going to say is 20 meters per second. And the angle that it's fired at, we're going to say, is 30 degrees. Okay, so as always, it's, it's kind of useful to create a table um, where we look at the x and the y values, the acceleration, uh, the initial velocity, uh, maybe a final velocity, and the distance traveled, although some, sometimes velocity and distance traveled are different depending on where you're solving for in the problem. Uh, there is no air resistance, so there is no x acceleration, but the y acceleration we're going to call negative 9.8 meters per second squared um, because we're going to call the positive direction um, up and to the right. Um, so the first thing we need to do is solve for this vi here. And the way that we do that is we, uh, we solve this triangle. And so the, uh, the way that we solve the triangle is to draw out the trig where we have the hypotenuse equal to the initial velocity, meters per second. And then you have the x velocity and the y velocity, vx and v y, and we can write a formula for both of those. Vx is equal to V, which is this, times the cosine of the angle, theta, and Vy is equal to V sine theta. This really doesn't change for these projectile motions. Uh, the sine is the opposite side, the cosine is the adjacent. So Vx is equal to 20 meters per second times the cosine of 30, that's equal to 17.3, or about 17.3 meters per second. And Vy, if we do the same thing, 20 meters per second times the sine of 30, and that's equal to about 10 meters per second. So we can fill this in. The Vx is 17.3 meters per second, and the Vy is 10.0 meters per second. Okay, so that's the, the first step, the first thing that we need to look at. Typically in these problems, um, yeah, that uh, or the things that you're solving for are the max height, the time in flight, and the last thing you would solve for is the range. Okay, usually the first thing you want to solve for, aside from the triangle, is the time in flight or the max height. It's up to you. So let's look at the uh, the max height. At the maximum height the y velocity is equal to zero, just like a vertical motion problem. We can use this relationship, y or vy squared. This is vyf squared is equal to vyi squared plus 2ad. Um, and we can rearrange that to vfy squared minus viy squared divided by 2a. That now is equal to d. Um, and we solve that out, we get d is equal to 0 minus 10 meters per second, and that's squared, divided by 2 times negative 9.8 meters per second. And the answer to that is 5.10 meters. Okay, so that's the max height. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do, we did the maximum height. The next thing we want to do is do the time in flight. The time in flight uses uh, the same idea that at the, uh, at the maximum, either the, the velocity is zero, or um, the quicker way to do it is to understand that if we have an initial y velocity here, the final y velocity is the same value but in the negative direction. And so the relationship that we're going to use for this is v, y, F is equal to VYI plus AT. Rearrange that algebraically to get T is equal to VYF minus VYI divided by A. And like I was saying just a minute ago, the final velocity, if we know the initial velocity is 10 meters per second up, the final velocity is 10 meters per second down, so that's negative 10 meters per second, minus 10 meters per second divided by the acceleration, which is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. The time in flight works out to be 2.04 seconds. Okay, so we're more than halfway there. 
the last step is the range. And like the horizontal motion problem, the range tends to be the, uh, the simpler thing to solve for. And um, for the range, the simply dx, this is in the x direction, is equal to the x velocity times the time. And so dx is equal to the x velocity, which we found out to be 17.3 meters per second, times the time in flight, which we just found out to be 2.04 seconds. dx is equal to 35.3 meters. Okay, so that's the, uh, the entire solution of the problem. Um, key things to remember here is, is that there is no x acceleration. There is only acceleration in the y direction. That's due to gravity. Um, and so that's why we can use this relationship here. Uh, thanks for watching.